Congratulations to the Baptist Peace Fellowship of North America, Bautistas Polov Haas, on our 40th anniversary. It's a wonderful legacy, of course, to the extraordinary leaders, uh, many of whom are very dear to my heart. Um, as some of you know, I've been involved in, uh, over the years, in helping to develop some of the international partnerships and conferences. And in this piece, I want to highlight some of the uh, early efforts to do this when the BPFNA was just in its infancy. I got involved in uh, Baptist peacemaking soon after I started my career in ministry. My first pastorate uh, was in Schenectady, New York, where an American Baptist colleague and friend, Priscilla Inkpen, happened to be one of the organizing leaders of a joint American Baptist Southern Baptist trip to the former Soviet Union in 1983. And as I recall, this materialized from a joint ABC-SBC peace conference that had been held in uh, Washington, D.C. the previous summer. Now, Dick Myers, who many of you would know, uh, was the president of the American Baptist Peace Fellowship at the time, and Larry Pullen, uh, who you also may know, uh, was the new director of the American Baptist Peace Program, and they were instrumental in this effort. And as I recall, a delegation from the All-Union Council of Evangelical Christian Baptists from Moscow were invited to come to this conference, led by Russian Baptist leaders Alexei Bichkov, Ilya Orlov, and, and Vasily Logomenenko. And Bichkov extended in his remarks, extended an invitation to U.S. Baptists to come to Moscow, which Dick followed up on, and Dick and Priscilla then were organizers from the American Baptist end of things, and the Southern Baptist group leader was Glenn Hinson, again, a familiar name, professor of church history at Southern Baptist Seminary. In any case, I assisted Priscilla in planning and fundraising and then participated myself in a follow-up trip in the, the following May in uh, 1984. And quite frankly, this was all of this was quite exciting stuff, doing something meaningful between people beyond just uh, campaigning for nuclear freeze. And the concept of ABC-SBC joint tours then became an effective form of public peacemaking, at the very least to put a human face on the Cold War stereotypes of our enemies. And these efforts took root and I think contributed to the importance of peacemaking in American Baptist circles, certainly, and flourished even more once the BPFNA was organized and formed in uh, 1984. And organizing friendship tours became one of the galvanizing activities for many of us in the early days of the BPFNA. Chuck Mercer and I organized another USSR trip in 1985, followed by others that were led by Kay Cooper and Howard Roberts, Dick and Beth Myers, and then a little later, Bill Apple and Mark Trumbo. And I put together another trip in January of 1988, which included visits beyond Moscow to, and for beyond Russia, as a matter of fact, to Poland and Hungary and the GDR. And meanwhile, at the same time, Doug Donnelly, again, very familiar name, was doing the same for trips in Nicaragua which were equally successful. And so literally there were a number of us engaged in bringing hundreds of North American Baptists to countries that were deemed as hostile by our political leaders. Um, and we felt that this was a, a prophetic way to live into Jesus' command to humanize and try to love our enemies and to give voice to the desires for peace among those who did feel threatened by the policies and the politics of the U.S. and its Western allies. Now, as these international relationships formed through friendship tours and other contacts, they became, I think, the impetus for Ken Sehested and other leaders of the BPFNA, um, along with other Baptist peacemakers in the European Baptist Federation and BWA, to organize the first International Baptist Peace Conference that was held in Sweden in August of 1988, where nearly 200 Baptists from six continents 
gathered to share stories and strategize and learn from each other uh, as peacemakers. And that was also the setting where we first met Saboy Jun, who told us of the slaughter of hundreds of student protesters by the military at the very time in Myanmar or Burma, and where the BPFNA, mainly through Ken and Dan Buttry and others of us, became involved in a peace process that would take us throughout the 1990s. And since those early days, we've had several additional friendship tours to other countries and locations, as well as some amazing global conferences in Nicaragua, Chiang Mai, Thailand, uh, Melbourne, Australia, Rome, Italy, and of course, most recently in Cali, Colombia, uh, to further build an impressive network of Baptist peacemakers around the globe. Baptist peacemakers, when you think about it, Baptist peacemakers today are multiracial, multicultural, multi-ethnic, multilingual, and of all ages and from generation to generation around this planet. And that's, that's a wonderful legacy, a wonderful legacy uh, for the younger generation then to build upon to further global peace work and partnerships that can engage Baptists around the world. And in this 40th year, that's a lot to celebrate. And I'm so honored and I'm so proud to have been a part of this inspiring work of the BPFNA Bautistas Polapas. Thank you. <laughs>